Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I have some absolutely awesome graphics pack updates to bring to you, as well as a brand new finding in relation to boosting your performance in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on this awesome emulator. First up, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new update to the cell shading graphics pack, though to be honest, I myself really believe this should have a graphics pack and be a setting all to itself. So many of you who watched many of my previous videos will already be aware of this cell shading option, which we've had for the past month or so in Simu Emulator and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This pack itself removes the cell shading from Link and many of the NPCs in game. However, this brand new mode known Known as light shading has now made its way into this graphics pack and when I turn it on you can see just how awesome it makes Link's character model and any of the other NPCs or enemies character models look in gameplay. Toggling it on and off you can see exactly how much of a difference it makes obviously not only to Link's character model but the entire world around him. It's almost like it makes it an even more stylized version of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and to be honest it looks very very similar to the style of graphics we had in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. To get this brand new update to the cell shading graphics pack all you have to do is click the download button in the bottom right hand corner of the graphics pack window and it will download, extract and install all of the graphics packs you need for this pack. Now if you thought that's all I was going to be giving you in this video, you haven't seen anything yet, we are now going to take a look at a brand new addition to the too many options graphics pack that you are going to be able to download from the description of this video. This brand new resize graphics pack is going to give us what a lot of Breath of the Wild players both on the Wii U, Switch and Simu emulator on PC have been asking for for a very, very long time. This is the very first implementation of a grass or foliage render distance and render size graphics pack. Using it is really, really simple. All you have to do is turn it on like you've seen me do right here, and then all you have to do is select a different preset that is different from the default of one in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, then just hit the reload shaders button. As you saw there, setting it to 2 didn't do too much, but when I set it to a value of 5, you can see that all of this grass off in the distance when I toggle it on and off is now rendered in at a much further radius to the player character model. And that's only part one of this new graphics pack's first implementation. When using this grass 2 setting, it's going to allow you to individually change the size and height of any of the grass that is in Link's direct proximity. As with grass pack 1, you simply have to choose which preset you want to use. As you can see, when I change it to 1.2 from 1, you can very, very easily see what it is adjusting in this pack. Now, you can set it to higher values. For example, when you set it to 2, the grass around a link kind of gets to a ridiculous size and to be honest I would probably just recommend for this grass 2 setting that you set it to a value somewhere between 1.2 and a value of 1.5. Sometimes even when using 1.5 in areas that are very very grassy like this one here the grass can be a little bit too high so for areas like this I generally like to set mine to 1.2. As with the stock grass in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild this longer grass is also fully physics interactable and if you thought the good news stops there think again we now have individual color control for the shaders on every single type of grass and tree in this game now obviously when i'm just using the default values that these come with it kind of looks terrible so i'm now going to do a little bit of shader color editing and try to find a nice balance of different colors in the game as you see, when I turn each and every one of these individual packs off, it just sets it back to the default of the game. So for now, let's just scroll down this list and here are my list of greens. Let's try dark green and see what that looks like. When I select dark green and select reload shaders, we now get this very, very nice dark green shade for all of the long grass in this game. Okay, so next let's try to find, yeah, there we go. We have the short grass shader color change. Let's just select this and again, we're going to need to scroll down through our list, find our greens section, and let's again set this to the same dark green color that we set the long grass to. And look at that, look how awesome this grass now looks with the edited shader color. Now you can see that we do have a color control over grass types that at least at this point in time we don't have height and density control 
over but i do believe that altros the creator of these graphics packs is working very very hard to try to find the control method for these other different alternative types of grass finally for the grass colors we need to change short grass number two and again we're just going to scroll down through our list find our greens and again set this to the dark green color and just check that out look how awesome breath of the wild now looks when we have individual control over all of these different elements of the game now obviously you don't have to use greens you can use luminous red or luminous blue if you want and obviously if you don't want to use anything and just use the stock colors of the game you can simply disable all of these different settings and do that also on top of all of this, you now have individual control over the different colors of the different trees in the game. Let's try a different shade of green this time. Let's try this light green. No, I'm not too much of a fan of that. It's a little bit too light. So let's scroll down and try this one. No, not a big fan of that one either. Let's try this one. No, that doesn't really work with the grass either, so let's try something a little darker. Let's try dark green again, and yeah, there you go. You can see you can perfectly match your colors, or if you wanted to do, you can make your game a horrible mismatched mess. Okay, so now that we've changed the color of our grass, let's see what the game looks like when we turn off this further render distance on the grass. To do this, all you have to do is toggle these off, and you can very clearly see, especially off in the distance, the difference that these two grass patterns make especially a grass pack one and i am super super excited to see what advancements we get in these graphics packs in the future okay so now that i've shown you how to edit your game let's now improve your performance in breath of the wild on CMU emulator the gameplay footage you're watching right now is me playing breath of the wild on my low end system that system contains an i5 2500k and a gtx 660 at this point in time I am also currently attempting to play the game at 1440p resolution and as you can very clearly see I am not doing so very successfully, only being able to run the game at 21 or 22 frames per second. This kind of performance I would have to say is probably fairly normal for a computer of this kind of specification, however there is a way you can really really easily boost your frame rates and all that you have to do is to simply download the better fence version of FPS plus plus that you'll find in the description of this video and use that instead of the one that comes with CMU. Okay, I'm going to quickly switch over to this better fence version of FPS++, reload my save and get myself back into this exact same area of the game and into the exact same combat situation. And boom, through the magic of video editing, I'm back in game, back into the exact same type of fight and on the exact same system, the i5-2500K system, you can see that using this better fence version of FPS++, my frame rates have gone from 20, 21 and 22 frames per second, all the way up to 27, 28 and sometimes even over 30 at 1440p resolution. These performance jumps can be even bigger on stronger CPUs, so if you have a faster CPU than a 2500K and are experienced some kind of a bottleneck in your system, I would highly, highly advise downloading and trying out this better fence version of FPS++. We had in fact previously covered this on the channel, but I myself didn't see any kind of performance improvements on my own system. The only reason I retested stuff with this FPS++ version was because when I was trying to play Breath of the Wild at 8K resolution, and while I was only able to achieve around 12 to 14 frames per second on on that PC, using this better fence version, I was able to achieve a stable 30. Even at lower resolutions when I was trying to get higher frame rates closer to 60, I am seeing a better performance, especially so on this 2500k based CPU, and even at higher resolutions on my 8700k based main PC, I am getting a better performance when using a better fence and running at much higher resolutions, as I've previously said. 4K, 6K and 8K resolutions. Now obviously not everyone is going to want to play at these high resolutions and I understand that but having found this very very easy way to boost your performance when you're running into a system based bottleneck I just wanted to make this little update video and make sure all of you guys who are suffering with performance issues just like this one are getting the very very best out of your computers. Over on CMU's official reddit and on YouTube itself I've seen literally countless videos 
where people have shown gameplay footage of Breath of the Wild and while they're standing still their performance is 30 frames per second or above but as soon as they start moving around they're getting drops and lag spikes. I genuinely believe that this could potentially be a fix for that so please do let me know down below in the comments section whether this better fence version of FPS++ helps with stability and frame rate improving in Breath of the Wild. Please if you're an AMD GPU user also test this out as from user reports in my discord over the past two days of testing we have seen very good results on that end also. As I already said anything you need or I've shown off in this video can be found down in the description in a download link. To use the better fence version of FPS++ in the same fashion as updating the cell shading pack all you have to do is click the download button in the graphics pack window for CMU emulator then simply select the better fence option. Hopefully everything I've shown you in this video is going to be to your liking and will indeed help you boost your performance levels. For now that's going to be it for this video. Cheers for checking it out. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.